Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord together to gather as the family of God and to worship God. Welcome to those who might be in our overflow in the fellowship hall and to those of you who are joining us online. We are glad that you're here and part of this time of worship. I'd like to remind those, well, I guess it's not a reminder if you're a visitor. I'd like to tell you if you're a visitor this morning that inside of our bulletin on the, on the back part, there's a little tear out there. You can fill out that information and let us know how we can uh, be of service to you and your family. We would like to hear from you and, uh, and see how we might be able to minister to you. You can uh, simply fill those out and place them in the offering plates that are located here at the front of the sanctuary or as you exit out the back of the sanctuary um, at the end of the service. I'd also like to remind you that uh, in giving of tithes and offerings, you can place those in the offering plates located here at the front of the sanctuary or at the back. You can also give through mail or uh, give online at firstbaptistfarmville.org. There's a link at the top of the page there. I want to remind you this morning that uh, we are uh, observing the Lord's Supper at the end of the sermon. Uh, it'll be tied in at that time. Make sure you grab a little packet, a communion packet. Uh, there is a basket located here. Uh, I think there are a couple that are located in the vestibule. So uh, feel free if you didn't get one to uh, make some movement now or in the, the coming moments. No one's going to think ill of you at all. Uh, but go and make sure you grab one of those. And if you're join, joining us online, I'd like to encourage you to gather the elements that represent the Lord's body and blood uh, for that time of communion. We would like for you to be able to join us as well. Inside of our bulletin, there are several announcements. I'd like to remind you that we're uh, currently having a food drive for the community soup kitchen. Vegetables, beans, and fruit are needed. And uh, these are the large cafeteria-sized cans uh, that, are, that are asked to be collected. Um, you can bring those through the month of August. And um, the, uh, the collection pew is located outside of the fellowship hall. There's a pew there. It's not for sitting. That's for collecting the Lord's supplies. So if you want to give uh, to that, please bring them there. We're also having a backpack school supply drive. You can bring any and all school supplies um, this can in also include sanitation supplies. They'll be donated to Sam Bundy, Bundy Elementary School, and um, you can bring those before school starts. Um, for those who have children or you know children, I'd like to share with you that next Friday, August 6th at 7.30 p.m., we need to be in prayer for our, uh, our children's ministry workers and bring your children here because they're going to have a lock-in. Um, that's going to be from Friday at 7.30 to uh, Saturday at 7.30 a.m. in the Lewis Johnson building, and we're told that each child needs to bring a snack. Is that it? That's all. A snack to share. Youth group had a great uh, mission camp this past week, um, this past Sunday through Friday. They went to the refuge, and they served in Walstenburg, Farmville, Kinston, in, in various ways, many, many ways. Uh, we look forward to them leading us in worship next Sunday and to sharing their experiences with us. Um, today we are thankful to be able to have Collis Moore joining us and sharing in the ministry of music and worship. So welcome, Collis. And lastly, um, we, are, we celebrate today a, a, a staff anniversary. Today is Catherine Saul's 13-year anniversary serving as choir director. Let's give her a little love this morning. I'd like to encourage you to take the time to, uh, to, to let Catherine know how meaningful her ministry is to you and to our church family. Yes, and that's part of, part of this announcement is to let you know that there is a choir, a choir practice this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary, and all are welcome. So I um, want to let you know about that. At this time, I'd like to invite you to join your hearts with me in prayer as we welcome God in, in this place. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks as we gather to worship this morning for your presence with us. We, we give you thanks that you're with us in a... In, in, in a very mighty and powerful way as we gather as your body, as we gather as, as your family, brothers and sisters, united uh, by the Spirit, we, we thank you that you give us gifts in, in that unity. We thank you that you call us to go forward and to be your people. And we pray that as we worship you this morning in the various ways that you would continue to help us become the body of Christ you've called us to be. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
my my reading this morning. Um, I want to thank you guys for uh, for pulling together for for my youth group this past week. Um, it was a very very humbling trip. Um, camp they worked their hind ends off. It was a lot different than passports. So so next Sunday is going to be very different. Um, it's 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 not going to be as loud and, and crazy as it usually is, but uh, I think it's going to be very heartfelt because instead of uh, balloons and beach balls, uh, they were playing with with rakes and shovels, and um, and it, it, it was a very good experience. Our worship at night was was intense, but it was very heartfelt, and um, you guys are a part of that, and, and I want to thank y'all so much for for continuing to believe in me, because I know that takes a whole lot of faith, but uh, but continuing to believe in these young people, because this past week they truly showed that they are the hands and feet of Christ in so many different ways and, and in so many different communities. So uh, so thank you guys for everything that y'all done for feeding us. I, I, I want to talk about the food real quick. I apologize, man. I know I dragged stuff out up here. Um. I needed y'all's dinner so bad the other night. Let me tell y'all, and, and, and y'all killed it. So, so whoever, I, I know there was so many hands that were involved in it, but uh, but y'all were an absolute blessing Wednesday night because I I was struggling. I had tacos Monday and Tuesday night, and I walked in the door and they said, guys, guess what we're having tonight? And we was like, what? And they're like, tacos. And everybody was like, yay. But y'all showed up with some pork loin, and whoo! Uh, I think I, I think somebody gave their life to Christ at dinner that night. <laughs> so uh, so thank y'all, thank y'all uh, for for everything. Um, not just not just for feeding us, but uh, but for praying for us and uh, and just just everything, man. It was a uh, it was a great week, and uh, next week is going to be very from the hip because ninety five percent of my youth family plan vacations directly after uh, camp, so a lot of them are gone. So we're not going to get a whole lot of practice, but uh, but they'll be able to tell you about it, and uh, and I'll have something for you as well. But um, I just wanted to thank you guys so much. But uh, let me get up here and do what I was supposed to do. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Colossians, chapter three, verses twelve through seventeen. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all the virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and ab- admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, rather in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God, to God the Father, through Him. The Word of the Lord. burns a fire with sacred heat white hot with holy flame and all who dare pass through its blaze will not emerge the same some is bronze some as silver, some as gold, then with great skill all are hammered by their sufferings on the anvil of 
His will, the refiner's fire has now become my soul's desire, purged and cleansed and purified, that the Lord be glorified. He is consuming my soul, refining me, making me whole. No matter what I may lose, I choose the refiner's fire. I'm learning now to trust his touch, to crave the fire's embrace. For though my past with sin was etched, his mercies did erase. Each time his purging cleanses deeper, I'm not sure that I'll survive. Yet the strength in growing weaker keeps my hungry soul alive. The refiner's fire has now become my soul's desire. Purged and cleansed and purified, that the Lord be glorified. He is consuming my soul, refining me, making me whole. No matter what I may lose, I choose the refiner's fire. That are coming down, I'm going to share another announcement that I forgot to mention to Graham. Um, this afternoon at 2 o'clock, the children's team and anyone who's willing and able were asking to come out and help us refinish furniture that we're going to move into our new area soon. So, But we've got a lot of sanding and painting to do. So anyone who wants to spend an afternoon working, we'd love to have you. If not, if you have a sander that we could borrow, we'd appreciate it. I think we have one or two at the moment, so we could take a couple more if anybody's got one that would willing to let us borrow for the afternoon and that's it going with that so good morning how are y'all good good okay who knows what the hokey pokey is you do you do can y'all come up here <laughs> they're like mm, come on you said you raised your hand uh-uh come on you raised your hand you can't get out of it all right so y'all gonna sing it with us y'all will y'all help them sing it so they can be heard so you put your right hand in, put your right hand out, you put your right hand in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. Simple, right? <laughs> but the next thing would be your left hand, then your foot, your other foot, and your whole body. But... But what would happen if the right hand said, yeah, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. The left hand can do it. The left hand's like, I'm not going to do it. Right hand's got to do it first. And so on with the feet. The feet say, well, the hands are not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. 
And the head's like, well, y'all just fine. I'll do it by myself. That's not going to work, is it? You can't do the hokey pokey without all the different parts of it, right? And, like, if you didn't have the rest of your body, you just had the head, that would look kind of silly. And it's kind of silly to do the hokey pokey. It's a fun little silly dance. But the body of Christ, our church, works exactly the same way, just on a bigger scale. We have different members of our church that are good at different things, like Mr. Graham, Pastor Graham, is great at preaching and leading our church. Mr. Johnny plays our organ and our piano for us. He's fantastic. We just celebrated Miss Catherine, who leads the choir. Everybody here has a different part to play in our church. God's gifted them with the different gifts. Some it's to teach. You've got Sunday school teachers. You've got Mr. Chris back there who leads youth. Everybody's got a part to play in God's church. Not just this building, but the entire church of the world. Even you guys. And everybody has to do their part or it doesn't work. God's called us all to read our Bibles, to follow his word, to tell others about him, right? You want to tell your friends about him. And that's how the body of Christ works. One can't work with the other. What would the choir sound like without Miss Catherine? What would we sound like without Mr. Johnny? Who would we listen to on Sunday morning if we didn't have these people and their gifts that God's given them? So remember, God's called you to do something really special too, regardless of what it may be. It may be just sharing it with your friends, or it could be eventually being a pastor. Miss Avery, I think a couple of years ago, even shared our message up here. You never know what God's going to do with you, but he's got a part to play to make his church work. So remember, you're just as important as everybody. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for bringing us all here. Thank you for making us your hands and feet and making us all work together. Help us to remember that without each other, we would fail. Without you, we absolutely would. So please lift us up, guide us in your work. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Would you pray with me? Father, we again thank you for this, this time of worship, being able to be in this space to gather and set aside a time to, to be the body of Christ together and, and to seek you. Lord, we thank you that as we knock on the door that you open it to us, and that as we seek you, we're, we're able to find you. God, we recognize that in our, our church family, there are many that are facing various things and uh, we just pray that you would uh, be, be with them in a very special way um, in, in the specifics of their lives. Our, our prayer list seems to grow every day, and so we give you thanks that we can come alongside of our brothers and sisters and, and pray on their behalf. But not only that, Lord, show us how we can be your hands and feet in their lives. Show us how we can, how, how we can be a, a, a face or a conversation or just a, a moment of reprieve from, from, from the, the battle that they're facing. And God, we pray for healing in their lives. We pray for physical healing. We pray for mental healing and spiritual healing. But God, we long for the day that everything is going to be made right. That there's no longer a need for healing. That everything is healed. And we thank you that the scriptures tell us that that will be when Jesus restores all. So Lord, we put our hope and our faith in Jesus who is working his very best in us right now. And we give you thanks that his kingdom will fully come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the second week of a sermon series called Battle Ready. We'll take a break next week and then continue the battle after hearing from our youth group. I'm excited about that. As God calls us to follow Him in being His presence in the Farmville community and beyond, we must battle against those things that the enemy will use to destroy us. We are called as God's people, to be battle ready. Last week, the sermon was called The Battle of Priority. To make our relationship with Jesus a priority in our lives, we must seek Him. And when we do that, He brings us into proper alignment with the things of this world, with the experiences that we have, with the relationships we have with other people. The Battle of Priority. This week, we're going to talk about the Battle of for unity. But before we can talk about unity, we have to acknowledge the ways that we are divided. So consider this Duke versus UNC. UNC versus NC State. NC State versus ECU, or throw in any other number of teams that are important to you. How about this in the church? Sunday school versus small groups, or traditional. Versus contemporary. Or think about our nation, Democrat versus Republican. Or conservative versus liberal. Potluck versus covered dish. Or if you want to bring out some fighting words, Eastern style versus Western style North Carolina barbecue. We are a divided nation. In fact, there was an article that was written in the past few years uh, that got quite a bit of attention. The title was, The United States of America are united on one thing, that they are divided. You know, division is not a thing for the body of Christ. In fact, there are quite a few scriptures that talk about the unity that we're to have. Psalm 133.1 says that how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there uh, male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 says, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one spirit and of one 
mine. 2 Corinthians 3.11 Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Over and over and over we see in scriptures that God's desire for the body of Christ is unity. It's pretty evident that God values it. And that the unity that we experience or don't experience can dictate our effectiveness for God in our community of faith and in the things that we're called to do in our community at large. Today's passage comes from the letter we call 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthian church uh, with the purpose of helping them overcome their struggle uh, of, and their battle against division. And they were divided over everything. These were some of the divisions that they experienced. Who's the best preacher? They would argue, is it Paul? Is it Apollos? Is it Peter? Or is it Jesus Christ himself? Who's the best? Who do you follow? They were so divided that they were divided over how to sin, how to be immoral. They they, they were divided over marriage and, and, and what is good and right in the marriage relationship. They were divided over idolatry. They were so divided that they were divided over how to sin good. It's pretty bad. They were divided over the Lord's Supper. Some saw it as a holy, a holy time of, 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 of remembering Jesus, and some saw it as an opportunity to get drunk. They were divided over the spiritual gifts, which are the best. They were divided over what happens after you die. And so Paul begins the letter in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 by saying this, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. He begins it by, saying, by, by laying out the groundwork that he's going to cover in, in all of the verses and all of the rest of this letter. You be united. There be no divisions among you. Be perfectly united in mind and thought. You see, unity is possible if Jesus is the priority. This sermon builds on what I talked about last week. If Jesus is our priority, that relationship is priority in our lives, then unity is possible. But if 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 we're not gathering as the body of Christ to to know Jesus better, to be on mission for him, we can throw unity out the door. It won't happen until we're united in our seeking of Jesus Christ. The one place in the world that we should expect unity is in this church. Amen? Someone say it. Say it louder. Amen. This is the one place that we should expect unity. You see, we have to move past the secondary stuff. That's what Paul's talking about here. you got to move past secondary issues. Paul, over and over, continues to point the church to Jesus Christ, their relationship with Jesus Christ and what he did as the most important. In fact, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 20, I love the book of Colossians. You've heard me say it probably three or four times in my short few months here. I love the book of Colossians because Paul packs together so much in one book. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 20, we have what's referred to as the Christ hymn. Theologians believe and scholars who, who go back and, and study the, the letters and, and the New Testament and Old Testament believe that Paul wrote this as a, as a creed of sorts that was probably, um, probably a statement of faith for the early Church, and it goes like this Colossians 1 15 through 20. The Son, being Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. We see it all in that passage of Scripture. 
We see the Trinity represented. We see the one God represented, it, but, but, but experienced in three ways. That's the, the mystery of the Trinity. We see the supremacy of Jesus Christ being the Son of God, the Savior of the world, that his death on the cross wasn't just this example of what sacrifice looks like, but it was the very act of atonement for us that when we put our faith in Jesus, we are actually forgiven of our sins because of his work on the cross. That is what we're called to be unified in. We're called to be unified in the gospel. You know, when I hear people talking about church and they start talking, you know, about their political beliefs or their preference for styles of worship and ministry, I'm very careful in those conversations to start pointing people back to Jesus. Because we have, it's like we have two hands. We have the essential and then we have the non-essential. The essential is the gospel of Jesus. But so many times we put this non-essential stuff that we're involved in and we elevate it over the kingdom of God, but it's not the kingdom that will let us down. Jesus is the only king of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. I know this feels like a November, first week in November sermon, but it's part of the battle that we're called to every day of our lives, the battle for unity. And Paul lays it out for them from the very beginning Let there be no divisions among you, but be perfectly united in thought and mind. When we gather together, it's okay that we're... Politics, and I I I said this in my first sermon, politics, we need to be involved in politics. It's the work of the people. But, But we're called to a higher unity than that can ever give us. We're called, we're, we're called to lay these things. Like, I love NC State a lot, okay? I'm okay with Duke. I hate UNC. I hate it. I just hate it. Just how I am. I, look, I was a minister in Greenville, and one pastor told me, he was like, he said, are you an ECU fan? I said, certainly not, okay? I was there, yes, I was there when ECU uh, uh, beat Russell Wilson, and look, it was rough, okay? And I, I hated that experience, okay? I said, but look, this is, this is minority. This is like minor little things, okay? Look, I'm proud of the college we got. I mean, it's great. It's training people up. When it comes to sports, I love my sports. But when I'm talking with people, like I, there's a certain place you get to and say, look, these things, they are what they are. We're involved in them, we're involved in them but they're just going to divide us. I'm called to a unity in the body of Christ. I'm called to this plane where I live above and beyond what the things of this world can give us. It's funny that I was struck most and given the, the, the best, probably the, the best, illustration of what the unity we're experienced to be uh, it, it, the, we're to experience in the church is like from a religion that's not Christian I have a world religions concentration uh, as part of my seminary degree and so one of the classes we went to go and visit world major other major world religions and so we went to the mosque that is located in uh, Raleigh huge big structure I mean, they're like a mega church. They're running service after service after service on the weekends, all throughout the week. And so we were invited to go to one of those to, to one of the services and to, to just observe it. And what we observed was these these Muslims coming in and gathering. And as they came into the room, they they pulled their shoes off, and the imam was telling us what was happening. And so basically, all these people were coming in. Some were dressed to the nines maybe even the 10s or 11s. Some were dressed like they just woke up, got out of bed. Some were, were dressed like they just came out of working in, in, in God knows where and crawl spaces under big buildings in Raleigh. I, the, people were dressed all over. But they took their shoes off and they came into the space. And the imam said, as they're taking their shoes off, they're leaving the worldly stuff behind and they are gathering as people all at, at the same level in life. There was a certain unity that they left behind when they gathered into and and it's, it's sad that sometimes the best illustration that we get of that isn't from God's church, from, from, from the church where we seek Jesus. It's a lesson. It's, a, it's not a lesson. It's a challenge for us to actually be who Jesus said we are to be. So think about that. Is your experience with the church, is your experience in following Jesus and being part of the body of Christ, do you elevate those things that are not essential or do you elevate Jesus? Because some we can't do both. And one leads to unity. One continues to divide. 
So in this course of this letter, Paul covers a lot of stuff. But he gives an illustration, and it comes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. And so that's where I'm going to read from this morning. He gives the illustration that the church is called to be, or it's called to be the, a body. It's called to be this living organism. And he gives the illustration in these verses. I want to read now and uh, if you have a copy of the Word, again, we're coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 27. If not, the Scripture will be on the screen. Paul says, Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we are all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were not all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be the weaker are, un- are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are, treat- are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need No special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We see that Paul begins by basically telling them that unity is possible because of the one Holy Spirit. Maybe you question this morning, how, how is unity possible in a world that's so divided? You've heard me mention several of the ways that we divide ourselves and we enjoy dividing ourselves, it seems, in America. Paul says that unity is possible, and it's possible because of the one Holy Spirit. In verse 13, he says, we are baptized, all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we are all given the one Spirit to drink. The one Holy Spirit leads us. Where does the Holy Spirit lead us? Does it lead us away from God? No. The one Holy Spirit leads us closer to Jesus. Leads us away from sin to righteousness and from worldliness to to holiness, from complacency to compassion, from sitting on the bench to to mission in this world. The work of unity in the church is a work of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul goes on to to talk about being a body, being this this body that's made up of different members. And, and, And a truth that I think is important that we know there is that the church... The church does have diversity, and there's a difference between diversity and division, right? Division is the way that we separate ourselves. Diversity is being different, okay? And and actually, in in the church, the diversity that we experience in our gifting and our calling is actually a gift to our unity. This morning, we had uh, Holly in her children's ministry uh, she, she explained and shared about the many ways that the Holy Spirit gifts people and people in our church use their gifts. And as your pastor, I am, I am so thankful that so many of you know how to use your gifts. And I've had many conversations with you and seen it at work. And, and I hope that in, in some ways in my conversations with you, I've affirmed in you that but, but because we are all called to a mission in life. We're not all called to, to, to paid pastoral ministry or staff ministry in a church, but we are all called to be on mission and have a ministry for Christ. We are all called. We are all gifted. And having diversity 
in that giftedness and in that calling actually is a gift to the unity that we experience. Think of a body. That's what, that's what Paul, this, the illustration that Paul gives is a living human body. Everyone can't be, the eye, can't be an eye. Everyone can't be a hand. Everyone can't be a, a, a foot it, or a knee or a whatever. Fill in the blank of your favorite body part. Everyone can't be that one. Or it would be a weird looking body, right? Or as my, my, one of my professors said, he said, you know, the, the law of organizations, the law of churches, and you see it you know, in our churches a lot, is you, you ever heard this, the 80-20 rule? That 20% of the people do 80% of the work? Anybody ever heard that before? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we hear it. It's a, it's a common phrase. He said, imagine, imagine if you, you woke up one morning and your body decided it was going to do that. Like only 20% of it was going to do 80% of the work. He said, you would be in ICU. Hopefully there's someone living with you that can get you where you need to go. Your body, you're, or you're going to be dead because our bodies don't function like that. It all needs to work together to be alive. You know, I, I think about our, our gifts and our callings. But our diversity isn't only there. Our, our diversity also is, is how we think. We don't all think the same way. We uh, don't all have the same baseline experiences that we began our life with. We didn't all have the same set of parents that instilled things in us. We're a, di- we're a diverse, beautiful, but diverse group, and our beauty comes out of our diversity. And we're, we're, we're actually called as the church to become more diverse in calling, giftedness, experiences, so that we can better have unity and better be on mission and better have life. And then Paul, he, so he says, you, you have this unity because of the, the one spirit. You're called to be this body. But you notice what he went into after that? In, in, I want to read it again. We're going to begin at verse 22. So if you go back up one slide up there. He talks about the drama of being the body. He says, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are un Presentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. I mean, he's just going on and on. I mean, I mean, you see it. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, he's getting back to the unity here that you're, you're, you're in it together. Every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Unity is one of those things that it doesn't come, even though we, we, it, we should experience it in the church, it's not natural. It's supernatural. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a just because we gather and, and, and love Jesus together, we still have to seek that unity. We have to fight, we, we have to battle for it. We come in battle ready, we have to battle for unity. And this is a hard thing to do, right, because... I have my opinions. Anybody got an opinion in here about something? Anybody? Just raise your hand if you got a hand. Raise, everybody has an opinion about something, and that's okay. But when I gather in here, when I'm in here, I'll share my opinion. But then I'll also understand that that's just part of the, that's part of the, the bigger conversation that's going on. There's a lot of opinions that we can have. But we're called to fight Fight for and preserve the unity of the Holy Spirit in the church. In the, ba- in, in the battle, we use certain weapons. We see some of those weapons in the, the passage of Scripture that Chris read for us, going back to, to Colossians. Remember, Colossians is my favorite book. Okay, so uh, he says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with this. These are the weapons. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another. And if any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, 
which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ, what's the message of Christ? The good news, the gospel. Let the gospel dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. He says, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And then pull, it's, it's, it's like, it's like they're, they're, they're pieces of armor that you're putting on. Then you clothe yourselves with love that binds them all together in perfect harmony. The natural state of the world is division. The supernatural state of the church, if we seek it, is unity. Now this morning we're going to be celebrating one of the two ordinances or the commands that Jesus gave for his followers. And it's interesting that both of those things involve unity. Think about baptism. We're all baptized in pretty much the same way. There's some different denominations that do it a little differently, but we pretty much all who follow Jesus practice baptism. The act of immersing ourselves or being covered in water and then arising anew as a new creation. There's unity in that we all experience the same initiation of sorts into the family of God. And then as we gather around the, the communion table, we gather as equals, brothers and sisters, children of God. Paul in the same book, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, he tells the church... Remember I said they had some issues when it came to the Lord's Supper. Some saw it as, a, as what it was supposed to be, remembering Jesus' body and blood. Some saw it as an opportunity to get drunk. Others maybe saw it as their only chance to get a meal. He said, you need to examine your hearts before you take this meal. And so we want to give a, a chance this morning before, um, before we uh, observe the Lord's Supper to do just that, to pray to seek God. And maybe a question that we need to ask this morning is, do we value the unity that God wants us to experience? Because if we value it, we will battle for it. Amen? And it's worth it, brothers and sisters. It is, it is absolutely, absolutely worth it. I, I love nothing more than standing with someone who I know we might have hold these non-essential things differently in two different hands but as we stand together as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ there is we are we are family because we prioritize Jesus and the relationship with Jesus and the unity that the spirit gives above all else so let's seek him let's examine our hearts for a moment let's pray let's confess and then we will partake
take the uh, communion packet and take the top, the top layer off, which will give you the wafer. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was gathered with his disciples celebrating the Passover meal. The Passover meal reminded the people of God of the first covenant that he had made with them. A covenant that ended with a a, a lamb being the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb. But at this meal, he basically was was telling them that he was going to become the last lamb, Passover lamb, the lamb of God. And he said, uh, he took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Up and blessed it and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. me as, as I pray, and this will be our benediction, and also a blessing for our week ahead. Father, we are thankful that we can stand together united as the body of Christ. God, we know that our unity is something that we have to fight for, we have to seek, we have to, 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 to prioritize because it's not going to come naturally. Lord, I thank you for what you've done already in this family, this church family, and for the unity that exists. But God, we recognize that you're always calling us to to, to move ahead and to go further. And so help us to fight for and preserve the unity that you've given us and help us to experience it at an even greater level. God, we believe that as we follow you together in the one calling and not having divisions in that, that you're going to bless not only our church family, but you're going to bless Farmville and, and the greater Pitt County, Green Care County, all these, these areas that we live and that we, we, we scatter to after worship. You're going to show us how we can be your hands and feet, how people far from you can come near in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that as we partake of this meal, that we remember the body that was broken for us and the blood that was shed. We thank you for the sacrifice that now gives us life. So let us see that we've given, been given opportunity, we've been given gifts, we've been given a calling. And as we go to, to be your hands and feet in this world, we pray that you would bless it. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And may you go in peace. Amen. <laughs>